the show today, we turn the spotlight on transformation within the South African real estate industry, plus on the home decor side, we take a look at the latest kitchen innovations. Hello and welcome to The Real Estate. I'm Eleni Jokos. Transformation, a term that has become synonymous with business in South Africa. Yet according to statistics, the rate of transformation across industries, including the local real estate industry, is not what it should be. Now joining me in studio to give us their views on what can be done to accelerate the process is Musa Gobo, Chairman Transformation Committee, SOPOA. Portia Taosekati, the CEO of Property Sector Charter Council, Leo Mlambo, Chairman National Property Forum, and Lindiwe Bulo, Executive Manager of Compliance at the Estate Agency Affairs Board of South Africa. A very warm welcome to all of you. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Leo, let's start off with you. Firstly, let's define transformation and what that means in South Africa. Yeah, transformation in South Africa has largely be, uh, been... It's become a swear word, if I can put it that way. But uh, you have to define transformation in terms of uh, several uh, issues surrounding the real estate industry. For example, I, I'm looking at one, a case in point is access to the market in terms of estate agents. Mm. And another case in point is um, the education of the estate agents. Another case in point is ownership as well, uh, which comes not a distant third, but very important as well. Mm. And I believe that if you look at those issues, we need to tackle them individually and then bec begin to have a wholesome idea of what transformation is. Mm. Do you think till now, Portia, uh, transformation has basically been a little bit of window dressing when it comes especially to the property sector? Look, uh, there's different sectors in the property sector that we're talking about. It would be commercial, uh, the commercial industry and the residential property market. I must say, though, um, the, rest of the commercial industry have um, they've shown a little bit of willingness to transform, and for for local um, for different reasons, obviously, to those of the real estate, they work a lot with the Department of Public Works, and a lot of them to interact with Public Works. Of course, transformation would be one of the imperatives to actually get to even start the conversation with the Public Works. On the other hand, the real estate or the resident residential property market, there hasn't been as much. Um, progress that one has seen within that environment and would hope to, to be seeing a lot of those kind of um, changes and efforts around transformation that we will be that we should be seeing sooner rather than later. Musa, why do you think that we've fallen behind when it comes to transformation in the property sector? I think from one has to look at where we fit in as the property charter. Um, we fall under the National Transformation Agenda, the DTI codes, which was finally promulgated in 2007, the, the final gazetted document. So in so saying, corporate South Africa um, generally in the main has been uh, good corporate citizens and uh, you know, your large institutions have been doing the right thing in the context of the, the framework. We have an anomaly when we look at um, the estate agents where these are family businesses and the vision or compliance of that business uh, alignment of that business is slight is different to to corporates who mm. are with the um, general policies and need to be seen to be doing the right things and continue to do so but with the state agents when it's um they are owed for their own pocket you know the the treatment of the agenda is slightly different and, and um, more definitely more emotional. Lindy, I mean, I think you could give us an indication of where we stand with estate agents, given the fact that you are at the Estate Agency Affairs Board. I mean, I also was alluding to the mm. fact that it's more of a family business. Where do we stand right now with black ownership? Yeah, it's, yeah we are at about 10%. So when you think about, you know, transformation that was supposed to have happened many years ago, and if only 10%, has tried to transform, it's, it's, it's difficult. And with us as the State Agency Affairs Board, it's, it, this is a national imperative. We have to ensure that transformation happens, but there is no legislation that 
enables the EAB to enforce that, you know, it, it becomes a bit of a challenge. Mm. But yeah, I see yeah. you agreeing with that. Mm. I mean, you're saying, you know, and we're saying only 10% is actually transformed. We need to gain traction on this. We need to change this extensively. Is it about regulation? Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. It's about uh, regulation. But look, for me, the most important thing is that we need to transform the industry wholesomely. Le let me explain. I think uh, um, to if we wait for other people to come to our aid in terms of transformation, we will not achieve that. What we need to do ourselves as an industry need to ensure that we, we go out there and become part of this industry uh, and become part of this bigger cake that we want to, to have a share in. How do we do that? First of all, there are a few issues that we can look into. The initial issue which I spoke about in terms of access to the market, there's been a fallacy uh, ar ar around that uh, uh, the black estate agent is only suitable to operate within the township environment. And clearly speaking, that's a very good thing. We need to operate within that environment, but we need to spread our wings because the economy is large and we need <coughs> to be seen to, to be operating across all markets. And how does that happen? We need to be educated. We need to ensure that we, are prof we professionalize our industry. Education for me is very, very important, very crucial. And that uh, uh, I must say is something that the Estate Agents Affairs Board shares with us. Mm. And for all, for all we say, if we do that, this industry is going to transform on a natural basis, I believe so. So you think education is one of those key elements at this point in time? I, s yeah. I clearly feel that it's very key. Because if you look at the, 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 the black estate agents per se, we've got a regulation right now that uh, by next year in December, if you don't have a certain type of qualification, NQF level 4, for example, you are not allowed to operate after that, which is a very good thing because it needs to professionalize the industry. Yeah. But clearly speaking, there are hundreds or if not thousands of estate agents out there mm -hmm. that still have to access that. And, and when we talk about transformation, I mean, looking at businesses that need to transform uh, in terms of top management, uh, Porsche, what about new entrants coming onto the market? Have we seen an influx of uh, uh, people interested? black Africans interested in this sector of the economy? No, we haven't seen a lot of uh, entrances that are coming through. However, um, it has improved uh, compared to the past. And okay, those and in that in, in that alignment, really, you're talking. There's two different areas where you talk about entrance in the black market. Uh, one obviously is skill development, which is really within the management level and in our property charter and a skill development. Remember, when you talk about uh, property charter, we're talking about property charter or BEE framework, we're talking about the seven codes, one of the codes of which would be skill development. And when you're talking skill development together with employment equity, you're talking about it at different levels. So how many managers do you have at these different levels? So now within one of the elements, actually, you are there's a score that gets given to new entrants within the, the estate industry. And I must say for me, in the real estate in particular, it's such a pity that you don't see a lot of uh, black estate agents coming through, but it's also a lack of education. And the reason why I say so is because there is no doubt in my mind whatsoever that in the next 10 to 15 years, the property residential market will be driven by affordable housing. Mm. Now, who best understands that environment than the black estate and uh, state uh, uh, agents that are within that environment? I mean, they've got the air, uh, they understand the, the environment, they understand the context, the background, and who best would actually be able to capture the market and be able to actually mm. own the market unless if they walk into that. So it's such a pity. And the question is, why hasn't that happened? And there's a lot of answers to that. And the question, for I think, for me is that the real, real estate has been really been driven by middle to high income houses, of which majority of the leaders within that environment understand that environment. And therefore, those that the black estate agents really have learned from those leaders and have not used very different or innovative method to penetrate the market. Mm. Musa, I mean, looking at government, it is, of course, the biggest owner of property in mm. South Africa, mm -hmm. surely. So surely t changes should be afoot when it comes to this. I think we're speaking about... <coughs> We're speaking about residential property, which is for like retail, purchasing yeah. an apple at the supermarket. One cannot dictate to the consumer uh, who to buy from, right? So from government's point of view and their interventions in the estate agents industry, it's very limited because we buy the, the, estate, the estate agents are buying and selling your house. So there's <coughs> really no influence from that point of view from government. But just to tidy up um, some earlier comments were, um, one, what are we talking about when we speak of ownership? We're speaking about the commission of um, the 10 billion commission that's paid through the industry. Mm. Um, secondly, we spoke of 10%. We're speaking to the number of black estate agents. 
and bring that back to Porsche's uh, earlier comment uh, regarding um, the interventions that, that need to be required. We need to separate the two and say there's an ownership, which is our line item one, and two, what uh, Mr. Mlambo keeps referring to is ensuring that those estate agents are able to function yeah. and earn commissions in the market. Mm -hmm. So from that point of view, one, the training, the education, the skills, the market access apply to the agents on the ground who are employees of yes. these agencies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we seem to um, <coughs> not separate those issues. How, um, many, yeah, how many real estate, black real estate agents do we have at this point in time in South Africa? Yeah, it's, it's just over 2,000. And, and how does that compare to the overall industry? And in over 2,000, I'm adding in yeah. Asians as well. Yeah, sorry. Okay, and, and I mean, looking at it uh, from the perspective of how it compares to the overall industry, how many real estate agents do we have in South Africa as a whole? Okay, this year we have 45,000 registered. So really minuscule yeah. at this point in time. Yeah, so exactly. th those things need to change. Mm -hmm. uh, interesting to note, I mean, Porsche was alluding to the affordable housing space, and of course that could be a, an interesting gap in the market. Exactly. But then, you know, my concern is we don't, we seem to forget where we come from. You, you do get my point. You know, this was caused by legislation. Blacks were not able to participate in this industry. Mm -hmm. So it is very important when we, we, we talk transformation, we must think, we must try and just close the gap first. You know, yes, it's through legislation and the will. And if the market will also dictate, when you look at the market is also changing as well, the market will dictate where the money is going. You know, and when black people are entering this industry, you'll go to a black person to buy. You know, because now we are involved in the, in, 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 in the property sector, you know, as, 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 as black people. We need to, you, when, when you go and buy, you remember that you can always go to the person that you trust most, who will understand. It's not just about because it's a big name. It's about the person who will understand your values as well, cultural things when buying property. Even in the residential market, you know, I had one estate agent saying, I didn't know that blacks, when buying property, there they is a function that they need to do, you know. And there's this person who wants to buy a four million house, and he, that estate agent had to consult a black estate agent to understand what should be done, you know. I'm just saying, we. So it's cultural we, we, trust it's, it's issues. It's cultural trust yeah, issues. Sure. Okay, that you also know. comes yeah. before. Yeah. Musa, I see you shaking your head there. I, I am shaking my head. I think we, we're speaking about the emerging black diamond, okay? In no way can anyone in this room say that when they bought the jacket they're wearing, did they debate whether the salesperson was black or white? And the timing of those things, if you need to purchase your house, you're going to purchase your house, irrespective. So I would like to coach the EAB that this squarely lies on the estate agents themselves functioning in those markets to transform. The person buying it is going to look and see Chase Everett, GC, whatever, sorry to use names, I'm not sure if I'm able to, but, um, and purchase a house, irrespective whether it's yourself or myself selling. Sorry, it, it actually, uh, Eleni, it boils down to exactly what I've been saying. Yeah. If we uh, intend to transform this industry properly, we need, to, first of all, to professionalize the industry, okay? Ensure that there's a, a, a professional estate agent out there. Ensure that this becomes an, an industry where people aspire to in terms of a career. And ensure that this industry is respected out there in the marketplace. K typical example, what uh, uh, Musa is talking about. If you approach me and, and uh, you want to sell my house, I don't care if you're black or white. But the most important thing that I'd like to know is that, are you qualified to do that? Are you professional enough to, to, yeah. to get my house onto the market? But believe you me, there is a, 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 an element of trust and an element of culture that's involved. Yeah. Currently, we're talking about the affordable housing industry, which is, which is largely black. And, and believe you me, uh, there are certain things that you don't do in the so-called upper class when you're selling a house. For example, in the townships, people don't like to, for you to put a board outside their house to say the house is for sale. Did you know that? Well, no, I didn't. That's interesting. The, 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 the Why it, not? Because it, it's, it's supposed to be something that's a, a transaction that is, involves a personal yeah. issue. Yeah. All right. We're going to pick up. <laughs>